Are you tired of dying in Valheim, losing your precious resources, skill progress, and well, your dignity? You've come to the right place. Today, we review Valheim's most common causes of death and detail some simple strategies that you can adopt so you never die again. Your first nemesis when landing in Valheim is not the grayling or boar, but in fact, trees. Ranging from the Viking babe to the most grizzled veteran, we've all at one time fallen victim to a timbering tree. Trees, when chopped, will fall in a mostly random direction, always keeping you on your toes. However, the true danger does lie in chain reactions that cause a cascading effect, resulting in dozens of trees falling at once. I've seen falling trees do anywhere from 5 to 60 plus damage based on how far it has fallen, and further, this damage is what Valheim calls pure, which cannot be mitigated with armor. For this reason, the only way to reduce your chance of death while woodcutting is to either one, just pay attention dummy, it's not that hard, or two, ensure you are well fed with strong health foods so that your health total can exceed any damage inflicted by the tree. Oh, and careful of rolling logs as well. At low health, even the smallest roll can kill you. The more speed they have, like on slopes, the more damage they can do. Speaking of food, not being well fed is one of the biggest risks you can take in Valheim. However, not the risk you might think. Unlike many survival games, Starvation is not a problem in this game, as you do not have a hunger bar. Alternatively, food functions to enhance your stats rather than a flat survival mechanic. Each food has attributes that prioritize buffing either your total stamina or health, indicated by the color of the fork on the food in your inventory. Starting with health foods, the first benefit is obvious, why the second and arguably more critical is concealed. First, the obvious. More health means more hits you can take, therefore increasing your survivability. Second, it increases your resistance to being staggered. You've likely staggered enemies or been staggered yourself during your playthrough. You become staggered when the orange bar next to your character reaches its peak, made clear by the flailing animation made by your player. When staggered, you are highly vulnerable. Fortunately, by increasing your max health, you reduce the filling of your stagger bar, therefore reducing how fast you are staggered. For these two reasons, when expecting a fight, make sure you have the best health foods in your belly based on your biome progression. If interested, I have included a full table of the health foods and their rank on screen for your viewing pleasure. I should note that sometimes a fight can sneak up on you, surprise mother like with raids. We will provide tips for surviving those later in the video. Second are stamina foods, which are in many ways more important than health. Valheim veterans will know that your stamina bar is your lifeblood. Stamina is used to run, swing your weapon, jump, parry, and block. Without stamina, you are helpless. Ensure you always have top tier stamina foods on hand, as with the health foods, I have ranked them all for your consumption. Overall, with three food slots available to your Viking, I personally like to prioritize eating two stamina dominant foods and one health dominant food while venturing around the 10th world. But if more conservative, feel free to try two health and one stamina for a safer approach. And with a full belly of foods, you'd think you'd be safe from Valheim's many creatures, but unfortunately, you would be wrong. The simplest step to avoid death by creature is to simply avoid them, like running from a giant troll or sleeping through the night. What you might not know is that the most dangerous creatures spawn when the sun sets. Sleeping through the night allows you to avoid these encounters, plus gives you the best buff in the game, which we will talk about shortly. That said, combat truly spikes in difficulty when you are mobbed by many at once. To overcome this disadvantage, I have five excellent tips. First, use area of effect weapons, or AOE for short, to hit several enemies at once. The first of this variety can be acquired as early as the meadows in the stag breaker. The stag breaker specifically, like the other hammers, solely have a slamming AOE attack hitting all enemies in your vicinity. Hammers are excellent for creating distance between you and your foes and applying a stagger effect to many enemies giving you extra time to maneuver. Furthermore, hammer slams can be used to strike enemies through doors and walls. This is a great way to use doors to your advantage when dealing with skeletons and burial chambers as an example. Ack gears also allow you to hit multiple targets with the secondary spinning attack. First crafted in the bronze ack gear in the black forest, ack gears are my personal favorite weapon class for their ability to handle multiple enemies with the added benefit of increased attack range and stagger application. Third, overcome the constant stamina drain of running, blocking, and parrying. Sure you have some stamina or tasty meads on hand. Pop one of these to dramatically increase your stamina regeneration, allowing you to recover quickly after blocking an attack. Also, never forget to get your rested buff. This buff increases your stamina, but also your health regeneration to boot. Simply rest by a fire for a few seconds and you should see the buff be applied in the top right of your screen. I never leave home without it. Remember, you can quickly get this buff by building a fire in dungeons such as burial chambers or sunken crypts thanks to the shelter effect provided. 
For this reason, it's always nice to have wood and stone on hand for a fire. Fourth, ooze and bile bombs are incredibly underrated with respect to dealing with large groups of mobs. What I believe sets them apart from standard melee weapons is that the animation time is brief, allowing you to toss one of these quickly while evading the attacks of your foes. Plus, they do a ton of elemental damage, which depending on the creature could finish them quickly. Fifth, if all else fails, it serves you well to have a hoe and some stone in your inventory. If in a pickle, whip out your hoe, point straight down, and raise the earth below your feet to elevate yourself out of the creature's attack range. Keep in mind, you must be near a workbench to utilize this strategy. At a height, pull out your bow and handle your enemies from the safety of your small mound. I will now cover strategies to tackle three of the most feared creatures in Valheim, starting with the wolf. The wolves are well known in Valheim circles for traveling in packs and surrounding unsuspecting Vikings. For this reason, it's best you keep them at a distance where you can pick them off one by one with a bow. Should this fail, a hammer or axe gear will assist keeping the pack of wolves at a distance. But as a last resort, as mentioned previously, throw down a workbench with a hoe and stones on hand, allowing you to quickly get a height advantage on the beasts. Second, and likely the first Valheim creature that made you say, oh shit, are the massive trolls. That said, the titans of the Black Forest can be navigated by keeping these three tips in mind. First, trolls are weak to pierce damage and resistant to blunt. For this reason, weapons like Akiers, spears, and arrows excel at taking them down while maces are not recommended. Second, trolls are one of only three creatures with a weak point as their heads are very weak to pierce damage. For this reason, the easiest ways to safely tackle a troll is with the bow to the head. Third, you safely stagger lock a troll with even the basic bronze Akiers secondary attack. Once close, Hit the troll with the secondary attack, staggering the beast. Wait for it to attack again and stagger him once more. Repeat this until the troll is in the dirt. While trolls are tough, nothing compares to the irritation of being one-shotted out of the blue by the plane's death skeeto. However, they're not as tough as you might think. In fact, you can simply block or parry their stings just as you would with any other attack. Death skeetos do only pierce damage and for that reason, the Serpent Shield sets itself apart from the other shields as it provides additional pierce resistance while blocking. Furthermore, the root harness obtained from the Root of Abominations also provides resistance to pierce damage, neutralizing Desquito's stings compared to the padded chest piece as an example. That said, if you're still too macho for a shield or armor, you can simply dodge their attacks. What is great about dodging in Valheim is you get what are called iframes, which allow you brief invincibility in your dodge animation. For this reason, when a Skeeto approaches, dodge roll into them, forcing a miss. Dodging into your enemy is preferable as it leaves you closer to them for a quick follow-up attack. This dodging strategy can be used for all other creatures outside of the planes, and once mastered, you will truly be a Valheim pro. Unfortunately, Death Skeetos are notorious for starting a death loop as we desperately attempt to return to our bodies following a death. But don't worry, I have some slick strategies to overcome this infuriating chain of deaths. The simplest strategy is to build some backup armor at your base. Rather than return to your tombstone naked, equip your secondary armor for some added protection. Second, if you have defeated Bowmass, his forsaken power is your friend. With Bowmass active, you receive a 50% reduction in damage from all physical sources, therefore maximizing your survivability as you run to your corpse. In my opinion, this is the greatest forsaken power in the game. Alternatively, we can attempt to make the run naked. Fortunately, I've got the perfect strategy for you. Return to a safe location near your body and ensure you have at least one item in your inventory, a rock or stick will suffice, and input the command slash die in the command console. This will kill your character, leaving another tombstone. Return to your tombstone and interact with it, retrieving your rock and providing you with the corpse run buff. This buff gives you dramatic damage resistance and stamina usage reduction as well as high health regeneration ensuring a much easier trip back to your original body. You can also augment the corpse run effect by also eating some food beforehand buffing your health and stamina. Heating these tips will ensure you are never caught in a death loop ever again. Funny enough, not all deaths in Valheim are as cinematic as those battling creatures, but can be a little more, well, embarrassing like those unfortunate tumbles from high heights. To avoid fall damage, we first need to understand how fall damage is calculated. Fall damage is applied when you fall from a height that is greater than four meters. With each meter of height above four, an additional 6.25 damage will be applied. 
As an example, if falling from 5 meters, you take 6.25 damage, being 1 meter above the 4 meter threshold, and 12.5 if falling from 6. However, the fall damage is capped at 100, which you would reach falling from a height of 20 meters. While numbers from my testing were not exact, this should give you a good ballpark. Damage received from falling is of the pure type, which in Valheim, remember, means it cannot be reduced with armor or damage resistance. For this reason, your first line of defense from death by falling is to ensure your health exceeds the max fall damage of your current height. To be safe, keeping a health total above 100 will ensure you never die from a single fall. The other preventative measures depend on the specific scenario you are in. First, while building, build wider scaffoldings by doubling up your stairs. Or if being extra careful, you can build railing like demonstrated here. Unlike games like Minecraft, there isn't a button you can hold to prevent yourself from slipping off an edge. Second, since Valheim's inception, snap selection for build pieces were added for flexibility and allow you to reach those otherwise hard to reach spots. Use the cycle snaps buttons shown on the bottom of your screen to place build pieces more safely. Other than while building, fall damage is common in the high ranging mountains. One tip I can recommend for navigating down its steep slopes is to bring materials to craft the carve or longship at its peak. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Man your ship and let gravity do its thing, taking you to the base of the mountain safely. Well, hopefully you have a little more luck than me. This strategy has the added benefit of making for a nifty way down to move your heavy stacks of silver to the base of the mountain by loading the ship. And of course, the absolute master way to prevent fall damage is to craft and equip the Feather Cape. The Feather Cape reduces fall damage to zero when worn no matter the height. Unfortunately, you will have had to progress through the Mistlands to unlock this recipe. Of course, while expanding your base, you are very likely in an eligible location for the inevitable raid event triggers. Raid events are particularly lethal as generally when in the safety of our home, we tend to forget to eat food or forgo our protective armor and adopt our preferred dress attire. For that reason, our first line of defense here is to prevent the spawn of raid creatures altogether. Laying down built items known as base structures prevent enemy spawns, even from raids, within their radius. Each item has a spawn preventing radius equivalent to that which can be seen when selecting to build a workbench as a rule of thumb. I've compiled the full list of spawn preventing structures shown on screen. In my experience, workbenches are the most resource efficient structure to use. With the interior of your base covered in benches, build a wall around the perimeter of your base. In this example, I use state walls, but feel free to use something stronger like stone. Now when the red circle spawns on your map, the creatures will be forced to spawn outside your walls. However, they will attack in an effort to get to your position. If you want to augment these fortifications, you can consider building a moat in front of your walls, or rather, substitute your built wall with a raised earth wall. Raised earth walls excel in that creatures can't damage them. With these defenses in place, you can simply wait out the duration of an event without having to raise a weapon. Of course, if you haven't had the chance to build these fortifications, you will be forced to fight the creatures hand to hand. In that case, refer to the tips covered previously in this video to guide you in combat. Next are the terribly annoying damage over time effects in Burning and Poison. Burning and Poison are unique damage types in that they do not do damage instantly with the attack, but rather do damage over time. Fortunately, I have a sneaky strategy to deal with this at the end, but you'll have to let me know in the comments if you think it's a cheat or not. First, burning is applied when taking fire damage from a creature such as a cultist or y'all. The damage over time lasts for 5 seconds and does damage each second over that period. The damage done per second is the total damage done by the fire attack distributed over that time. For instance, if a cultist hits you with a fireball, rather than dealing 10 instantly, the burning effect will do 2 damage per second for 5 seconds. Burning effect damage is pure and therefore cannot be reduced by armor or other resistances. That said, the base fire damage done to cause the burning effect can be reduced with increased armor and adding fire resistance. For this reason, it is recommended when doing battle with fire willing creatures to carry with you fire resistant barley wine or equip the full Fenris set for the Fenris Blessing set bonus. Alternatively, if there is water nearby, dive into it to remove the burning effect. Also keep in mind, armor like the root armor is weak to fire, which would further increase the burning damage if wearing the set. Second, and what I consider to be one of the most dangerous damage sources in Valheim is poison damage. When hit with a poison dealing attack, like the blob or greater shaman, a poison effect will be applied to you. Unlike burning, the duration of this effect varies based on the strength of the creature. For instance, the zero star shaman hits me for 17 damage doing 1.7 per tick over 10 seconds, while the 1 star does 26.4 damage resulting in 12 seconds of 2.2 damage ticks. 
Poison is punishing, so craft poison resistance meads or wear the root mask to mitigate its damage. Both burning and poison damage timers will be reset and the tick damage reassessed if hit by the damaged source a second time while under the effect. It is also worth noting that the resistances provided by both the fire resistance and poison meads cannot be applied retroactively, meaning you need to have consumed the meads prior to the effect being applied to you for them to reduce the damage. My second recommendation and maybe most controversial tip is that if you are hit with a damage over time effect, you can simply log out of your server and log back in. Logging out resets all status effects, effectively removing the damage over time. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a cheat or not. And of course, perhaps the biggest threat to a Viking's life in Valheim is a dirty combination of arrogance, overconfidence, or just generally being unprepared. I'm talking to you, Mr. Viking, wandering into the mountains in his troll armor. As you progress through Valheim's biomes, you unlock new materials to craft, increasingly strong weapons, armor, and foods to help assist you in your adventures. Entering a new biome before you are readily equipped will surely lead to your rapid demise. Fortunately, you can ensure you are properly prepared with my complete armor and weapon guides on screen now.